Yeah, you're right, but unfortunately, you're also wrong at the same time. <laughs> the, the, there is no right definition, there is no right um, answer to this question. Because the countries on this planet could not reach a unanimous ground on the definition of consent. But the Western and European countries arrived to some sort of definition and define it as consent, as the, ma the act of making a voluntary decision of participating. As long as everyone involved is conscious and has the capacity to make such decision. And, most importantly, has the freedom to retrieve the consent at any time. So, after... I define you, give you these two definitions, really important in rape culture. Um, how does it take, how do you have effect on rape culture and that, how does it affect you? I would like to start from the history of rape. So the first known rape in history was in ancient Rome when Lucius Tarquinius Superbus raped Lucrezia. Lucrezia took her own life. I'm not going to stay here to tell you all the story because it's not an history class. But, long story short, Lucrezia takes her life. She kills herself. Why did she do that? Well, in ancient Rome, sleeping with a man that was not your husband, or even before marriage, was an act worse than death itself. So, now, I would like to step forward of 2000 years. And we find ourselves in modern Florence, in the year 2008 where a girl was gang-raped by other six guys. During the trial, the appeal of Chamber decides to pardon the guys and absolve them from any crimes they have committed. Why? Because they had misread the signals. So, how do those two stories relate? These are some ways that rape culture presents in our society. Now, I would like you to sit back, uh, relax, close your eyes, please, and think about your past action and thoughts. So, have you ever thought, maybe while out of clubbing and looking at a girl, and you thought, wow, she should not wear that skirt? Or maybe, during a gossip session with your friends, you were talking about a girl in your class or in your group of friends and start to judge with how many people she has slept with. Or maybe someone has compared your virginity to your worth. Or even you heard the news of a guy that was raped. And your first thought was, it must be gay, because men don't get raped. Or, with some friends, someone made a rape joke, and you laughed at it, without thinking of any consequences. And that's because there were no consequences at the time. Without even thinking about it, and without even taking part but we all took part in rape culture. Then I was, uh, I was shocked by this, but I wanted to see how many people are actually affected by rape culture. You can open your eyes, for who has <laughs> your eyes closed, sorry. <laughs> um, but I wanted to know the number of people that are affected by this. And I can tell you that around the world, every 45 seconds, someone is raped or sexually assaulted. Big numbers, we don't know how many people are they. But, put more simply, it means that one out of five women is sexually assaulted throughout their whole life. And for men, one out of 33. That's a lot. In the UK, at the end of 2021, the police has filed their yearly report. And do you want to know how many cases of rape and sexual abuse in one year? 70,330. <coughs> Out of these cases, 2,000 were charged. Only 2,000. Then I was curious about my own country. I'm from Italy, for who didn't know or didn't figure it out yet from my accent. 
Uh, and uh, in Italy, each month, the police open 200 cases, which means that per day, they, they open 11 cases, which means that uh, about every two hours, one case is reported. And these are just the cases that are reported. There are many more that are not reported. Actually, five out of six women decides to not report. And the same is for four out of five. Why people don't report? Why don't we report? Why didn't I report? This is because the justice system didn't create a trusted relationship between the victims in the past. And, uh, and the justice system. The process is just too humiliating for them. So, is only the justice system the problem? What about the school system? The school system is capable of reinforcing three things in our society. Racism, transphobia, and rape culture. What does this mean for you? I would like you to take a moment to read these signs. Dress code is a, hard ter is a difficult term to define, but I will share a personal story with you, and I would like you to listen to me, even with me wearing a see-through t-shirt, because dress code goes above this look. So, I was in high school, and uh, I was 16 at the time, and I always try to bend the rules at my own advantage, try to challenge the status quo. But this time, I was dress coded for the third time. So it means that I could have been suspended because I was wearing a sleeveless top. And you might think, okay, a spaghetti strap or a top where you can see everything. No, it was just a top above my shoulders. I was dress coded for this. I heard multiple times, it's too distracting for the boys. You can't study like that. I'm, am I studying with my shoulder? I think I'm studying with my brain, not with my shoulder. What, how my collarbone and my shoulder can affect my way of learning. This is, I could not figure it out. I could not understand this. It's too distracting for the boys. I didn't have any male teacher. I only had two male classmates. Who was, who was I distracting? Was I questioning my teacher's sexual desires? I was 16. That's fucked up. So, but it's not only the school system that tells us how to dress. Our society raises girls to believe that the way they get dressed is the way they want to be treated. The way that they get dressed is the way that, they define, that defines their consent. And this is wrong, because this is, in this way, we project the responsibility of the act from the perpetrator to the victim. Because rape culture is, people believe that rape is a misunderstanding between a woman and a man. People believe that it's always man and woman, perpetrator and victim. That there are only two genders in the rape history. Because this is because everything pertaining with sex in our society has always been a taboo, something to be ashamed of, something to keep a secret, something that was almost outlawed. But why is this? Why don't we change our mind? In this way, then we move the shame to the victim, and in this way we create more rape culture. Now, at the end of my research, I was left with a few questions, and I would like to share them with you. So, how come that uh, when there is a robbery, we know something has been stolen? Because there is nothing there. How come that when there is a murder, we know someone has been killed? We have a body, right? How come that when someone decides to report, to come forward about uh, being raped or sexually abused or sexually harassed, uh, people say that they were looking for attention. 
that they are looking for attention. Why we don't believe them? Why is the first thing, no, you're just looking for revenge? Why do we always project the shame to the victim and never give the fault to the perpetrator? This is all part of our culture and we need to change it.